So there you are, deep in the enemy jungle, four, zero, and three. And you know a monster can be lurking in any bush, but you're not scared because you've got your cunning and your marksmanship and the love of your life watching your back. Yes, indeed, the two of you are unstoppable. And you know that the ocean dragon treasure is yours to claim. Now quick, what game are you playing? If you said, why I'm playing the perennially popular competitive computer video game League of Legends, you would be wrong. Your ELO is at a three season low. And don't you pretend that you're gonna pick up just a few games here and there, no big thing, to get it back to respectable. You know that if you're in, you're in for the long haul. And who's got the emotional fortitude for that kind of thing right now? Anyway, no, you are playing Zaya and or Rakan in Dungeons and Dragons, because in fifth edition, there's rules for that. Zaya and Rakan are a pair of wandering idealists, lovers and fighters both, on a mission to save their people. As members of the dwindling Vistaya, it can be hard for either of them to find a friendly face when they need it most, and that's why they go with the more reliable method of always bringing a spare one with them. It's this team aspect that makes them so unique, so making characters that dovetail and synergize with each other is going to be just as important as getting each of them right on their own. In its own way, that goes for the role-playing aspect of these characters too. Creating a PC that hooks into the game world with and through another PC means that no matter how absurd and unrelatable of a situation you find yourself in, you'll always have a jumping off point for how to act and react. And that can definitely help shortcut some of the awkward early session process of creating a personality from scratch. Just make sure that you and your partner aren't crowding the rest of the party out of social interactions and character moments while you do it. All right, back to rules. Let's start with Zaya. First, for stats, Zaya should focus on Dex and Wiz. Next up, choosing her race. Both Zaya and Rakan are Vestayan, which means that their ancestors, however many millennia ago, were super powerful humans who merged their very beings with the world of spirits. I don't know about you, but that pretty much screams fey to me. So, we could definitely go with elf or any other fey race, but there is one thing that is more powerful than magic in the world, and that is feats. Variant human will give us the one we need here, and hey, after all, the Vasaya are descended from very, very variated humans, so the lore checks out. We'll take an old favorite, Magic Initiate, and that will give us the first level druid spell, Entangle. Zaya fights using her wits and at a distance, usually with feathers, but we'll substitute in arrows and then focus on tricks and wiles, like setting traps and using the environment to our advantage. As for class, since we want to use a bow, we should of course go with fire. But we're actually going to nab three levels of ranger first. This will give us not only the archery fighting style to keep our arrows nice and precise, but also spells. We can use snare, along with entangle from our feet before, to root and trap our foes just like Zaya's rooting feathers do digitally. Hunter's mark will increase our DPR, and for our last spell, how about jump maybe? Just a thought. Now, we'll want to take Hunter as our archetype so we can have the ability Horde Breaker, which allows us to shoot two different enemies a turn so long as they're within five feet of each other. So we can attack at range and lay traps, but we're still missing some pretty crucial elements of Zaya's kit, and that's where Fighter comes in. We can't specialize in archery twice, so we'll take armor for the extra AC. But what we really came here for is the archetype Arcane Archer. This archetype allows us to start collecting a number of Hawkeye-like trick arrows at level three. We get to pick two from a list, and we can use them twice per long or short rest. In one of her characteristic attacks, Zaya runs a feather through all enemies in a straight line, so we'll take Piercing Arrow. That allows us to hit all enemies in a 30-foot line, so that's pretty perfect. Let's also take Grasping Arrow to add another form of trap, all of which we can use to buy us some time when we need it. Now that we have the DPR machine going, how are we going to protect it? Let's turn to our wise cracking bodyguard and life companion, Rakan, who favors Khan, Wiz, and Charisma. In digital game, Rakan heals allies and charms enemies while fighting in close range. More importantly, however, his powers are stronger when he's standing close to Zaya. To emulate that, we'll need to take a dive into Unearthed Arcana for its new cleric archetype, the Unity Domain. The marquee feature we get for this archetype is called Emboldening Bond, which allows us to form a bond between any two willing creatures, including ourselves, that lasts for an absolutely insane full hour. Six hundred rounds of combat. When two creatures who are emboldeningly bound stand within 30 feet of each other, they each get to add an extra d4 to attack rolls and saves. It's like a super bless. At 6th level, we can even give up reactions to make your apartment resistant to all damage, which means you get your security deposit back. We can even give up reactions to make your partner resistant to all damage for a turn. This is where we're really gonna shine. By sixth level, you and Zaya are a force of synergy just for standing close to each other. But let's also take a look at our cleric spells and see what we can snag to make this character feel even more like the cheesy charmer Rakan. We're up to third level spells, and there's plenty of charm and utility here. We've got Hold Person for the hard crowd control. We can take Bless so that, along with our bond, we're adding 2d4 to every attack roll. We can use Healing Word and Mass Healing Word, both of which outclass the tiny heal from Rakan's Q ability online. And for anything that those don't fix, we can hope that the protection from shield of faith lasts long enough to find a solution. For a finishing touch, let's look at what we can do for Rakan's ultimate, which is apparently running around really fast and charming everyone. But 
There's no real good way to replicate that around level 6. That said, we can draw on our racial heritage to take the Fey teleportation feat exclusive to elves. Did I mention that we're an elf? By the way, we're an elf. That will not only give us more charisma, which we definitely do need a little sum of for a dashing guy like this, but also the spell Misty Step to ensure that we can always leap back to Zaya when we need to stick together. That's pretty much all we need to emulate Rakan. The domain feats do everything we want to do, like letting us take hits for Zaya with our channel divinity to split damage among the party. And there we have it, a pair of absolutely legendary PCs from Runeterra. Until next time, it's dangerous to go alone, so take some rules. Ta -da. And this is the end part of the video where I like to address some of the things people were saying on the last video, um, which y'all had a lot of really great discussion on. A lot of it was about whether or not Gestalt was or in fact was not broken. And I think there's a lot of good perspectives on there. It definitely is broken if you're not expecting it. And it is overpowered, but that's kind of the point, I think. Like somebody said that they uh, run Gestalt campaigns when they want to be not just like heroic, but super heroic. Like these are like the biggest heroes in the land. And that's a really great feeling for that. It's like also when you do like a, a higher than average point buy, similar kind of thing. It's when you want to feel really, really cool and good at what you're doing. Another use that people mentioned a couple times is uh, if you only have two players and you want to play a, a campaign, this works. You basically give each player two characters. That's a really fantastic use of Gestalting. Some of the combinations y'all listed, listed uh, Bard with anything, Fighter with anything. Kineticist got thrown in a lot, which is really exciting because Kineticist has just a ton of super cool ways to just like interact with the world. The only problem is Kineticist is horrifyingly complex even when, you know, it's the only class. So good luck with it, but it does make things a lot uh, more fun to just kind of like walk around them. Investigator came up a couple times. Uh, always remember the Inquisitor. Inquisitor has a, a bunch of uh, narrative agency tools. All really great stuff. I got comments on uh, the origin of the word Gestalt, which I was gonna go over in the video, but I thought, nah, that's not a rule. But yeah, it's a German word. I, I think I know it from uh, psychology, like uh, like graphic design uses a lot. Like when you have like a dashed circle, it's not really a circle, right? It's a bunch of dashes, but it looks like a circle. It's a Gestalt circle. And apparently it means a lot of other things in German. So, uh, and I also apparently say it wrong every time, just like Arcana but that's who I am and I'm gonna stay that way. As always, if you have rules you would like to hear more about or strange interactions uh, in any system that we've ever touched, leave it in the comments. We will get back to it and maybe make a video on it. Also, if you like video games, we stream on Twitch three times a week. That is Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Our Twitch streaming schedule is up and about. I think it's on our Twitter and you can definitely find it uh, uh, if you look for it, I'm sure we it's on Twitter. We are streaming some cool stuff. We got a bunch of shows. Uh, it's really fun. So just drop in. Say hi. Tell them that I sent you to me. I'll like that. 